Slickfest Wizard here. This year, February 5th, the Ultimate Fighting Championship will present to you UFC 126 Silva vs. Belfort. But before I get into this outstanding looking card, it's gonna happen uh, this Saturday, I want to tell you all a little story. Back in 2006, June, uh, a fighter debuted in the UFC. And it was around that time where I started watching clips of another fighter on the internet doing all these kind of jujitsu stuff and submitting people from the old days. So you can probably guess that that was video of um, Horace Gracie. And I thought, oh, if you had jujitsu back then, you could beat almost anybody. But then I started seeing clips around that time of another fighter, another Brazilian, just like the fighter that debuted in 2006. But this fighter had great hands, and he brought back the idea that, uh, that yeah, you can have great ground uh, skills, but make sure that your stand-up is, is nothing to laugh about, too. That fighter was Vitor the Phenom Belfort, and the fighter that debuted in June of 2006, when I was just finishing high school, was Anderson the Spider Silva. This Saturday, Anderson Silva will, will put his middleweight title and his undefeated UFC record on the line at UFC 126 against Vitor Belfort. I didn't get around to finding out even who Anderson Silva was until I came to Wilmington and I started watching Spike TV. And uh, this looks like it's going to be a great card. I want to just start from the top, uh, but I want to talk about too about how uh, this card can possibly not be that great, or it, how how it could, it could end up being underwhelming, you know. So, all right, Anderson Silva, Vitor Belfort. What's going to happen in this fight? I predict one of three things, but I'll get to those three things later on. Anderson Silva is the man. He is uh, at one eighty-five. He um, is the pound for pound king, according to many, and coming off of a. Uh, his last fight at UFC 117, while I was still a college student, was when he faced Chael Sonnen, the best trash talker in the game. And he ended up winning, still defending his belt with a, uh, a come-from-behind uh, submission of the year triangle choke victory in which Chael Sonnen was dominating Anderson Silva. I don't think he... Uh, I still don't, don't believe he was legitimately doing that. If, if Belfort goes out there and does what Chael Sonnen did, too, in this fight, then I'll be like, oh, I was wrong. So, that's how it goes. But, uh, Anderson Silva, I still think, gave those, th those, that first, those first 23 minutes to Chael Sonnen before beating him, and now he is facing a true contender, a true threat in terms of the stand-up game and the ground game to his middleweight crown. Anderson Silva also has is the most accurate striker in the UFC. Belfort's good, but it has been a while since he has fought at 185. His fight against Franklin, he was at 195, 10 pounds over. So, and uh, Belfort did, did come off of a nice win over, over Rich Franklin, but since that, he hasn't fought in the UFC for a year and a half. And Anderson fought twice. So who am I going to pick in this fight? Well, the three things I see happening in this fight. I'm going to pick Anderson Silva to win this fight regardless of it. But one, Vitor Belfort goes out there and he shocks the world and catches Anderson Silva with a strike, knocks him out, or catches him on the, um, with a submission or decision, whatever. He somehow beats him. Two, Anderson goes out there, brings his A-game, brings his amazing striking and his great timing, his lateral movements, his, uh, just the crazy combinations he uses, and I see him defeating and uh, Vitor Belfort late third round TKO or late second round TKO. Oh, or the third thing happening, and we all know we don't really want this to happen, but we see that Vitor... Still is no match for Anderson Silva, and what Anderson does at that point is he clowns around, dances, and does all that foolishness stuff until the time 
is up. And because there's something we need to consider. Uh, Anderson Silva's has only gone the distance two times in his UFC career, and those were both against fellow Brazilians. Both of those fellow Brazilians were jiu-jitsu specialists. And while, Belf while Vitor Belfort is not a, a pure jiu-jitsu specialist, he is Brazilian. And the sixth ranked middleweight in the world, according to SureDog.com. He also trains at, uh, he, he's trained with um, Carlson Grace. He got his black belt from him. And it's Extreme Couture. That's good. But Vitor Belfort has cracked under pressure before, and I believe that Anderson Silva still represents enough pressure to do the same there. So I'm picking this, this fighter. Next fight. Okay. Gotta speed this up. Forrest Griffin, former light heavyweight champion against Rich Franklin, former middleweight champ. This could be fight of the night, but both guys have to be willing to, to go out there and really go for it. Uh, Rich Franklin, ever since the Spiders showed up, he's been kind of in the game, but still laying low. He had a good win over Vandalay Silva, and he's also beaten Chuck Liddell. He knocked him the hell out. But I believe uh, that Rich Franklin has the better cardio than Forrest Griffin. Griffin beat Rampage. Yes, he choked out Shogun somehow, but uh, Griffin, as the fight goes on, he'll fight harder, whereas I think believe I believe Franklin will fight smarter, so I'm going to pick Rich Franklin to defeat Forrest Griffin, um, maybe by unanimous decision or majority decision. I see Forrest maybe winning the first round, but I see Franklin's cardio, his unorthodox strikes, and uh, his footwork being too much for Griffin. But I'm rooting for Forrest Griffin to win there, guys, so yeah. Next one, John Jones versus Ryan Bader. Dang. Every one of these matchups could be like a main event, some at, at like a fight night or something. Okay, John Jones. I'm going to just make this clear and simple. Jones is a much better striker and a much better wrestler, I think, than Ryan Bader. This will be his biggest test yet. Ryan Bader coming off a, a good uh, a knockout win over Keith Jardine and a victory over uh, Rajiro Nogueira. That was good. Uh, he is undefeated, but uh, he does look like a fish out of water on his feet. Keith Jardine doesn't have necessarily the softest chin in mixed martial arts. So I see in this fight Ryan Bader trying to land that kind of, you know, Superman punch he likes to use, but John Jones is going to see those coming from a mile away. So I'm going to pick Jones to win this fight by second round knockout or a very clear-cut unanimous decision. Uh, people are saying that John Jones, because he has so much hype behind him and all that stuff, and I understand where that can go. Um, I'm not just going to say that John Jones is unbeatable or anything, but as of right now, at this point, he's pretty good at 205. Um, I still think that Shogun can beat him, and I still think that Lyoto Machida could win a unanimous decision over him. And by the way, guys, uh, John Jones is not overrated, okay? He's not. Don't give him a title shot yet, because I, I watched some videos online saying that the most overrated fighter in the UFC is Brock Lesnar. Whatever. And the most underrated fighter is John Jones, because he hasn't gotten a title shot yet. This is a real test, and we're going to see if the hype is real with this fight. Okay, so John Jones for the win. Jake Ellenberger... Versus um, Carlos Eduardo Roca. Jake Ellenberger uh, really wants to fight John Fitch eventually. Uh, you know what? Sorry guys, I'm going to have to cut the video short right now. I'll start it up in a little bit. Um, just for time purposes on YouTube.